There's a new study which is confirming exactly what we all know. This recent study published uh, just a couple days ago, I believe, this was a study on 777 participants. What they were looking for was the rate of myocardial injury, like how often did it occur? Those who don't know, myocardial is referring to the muscular tissue of the heart. So was there heart damage and how much or how many people did that affect? The way that they were measuring this was by looking at a marker called high sensitivity cardiac troponin T. So this is basically a marker of damage to the myocardium. So markers of heart damage was present in one out of 35 people. This equated to about 2.8%. Now, the authors mention how this is a much greater incidence than what was previously estimated by other meta-analyses, and the estimated incidence was 0.0035%. So it's a pretty significant difference, okay? Like massive, massive increase in how often this uh, heart damage is occurring after these shots. They made the point to say that the elevation in the cardiac marker troponin was only mildly elevated and it was only elevated for a couple of days. So they, they said it was mild and transient increase um, and apparently it normalized after a while. But what they did specifically do was they told the participants who showed elevations in this marker to not engage in any physical activity or any excessive exercise because that is known when there is this mild inflammatory reaction of the heart it can actually make things a lot worse and end up in serious cardiac injury. Now, I wonder if people develop this, they're not being tested for it, and then they go out and do intense physical activity. The people who come, come to mind or the population that comes to mind are athletes who are engaging in very intense physical activity on a regular basis. This might be able to help explain at least uh, why we are seeing such increases in cardiac death and cardiac events among athletes. So this is a very interesting topic. I wrote about this back in November 2021. You can see the article published here. I'll link it in the notes, published on a website called SOT.net. Now, at that time, there was a lot less data um, and things have gotten progressively worse since then. So back in November 2021, it was really bad. Um, but since then, there's, a, there's an article from the expose, and this was even just a year ago that this was published over a year ago. Um, and based on their analysis, the athlete or the deaths among athletes was 1,700% higher than, uh, than it would have been prior to the rollout of the shot. Uh, if we look at some of the graphs provided, you can see that just between Jan 2021 and April 2022, the number of... Um, incidents was shocking, frankly shocking. We also then look at another piece of data, the monthly average between 1966 and 2004, which isn't actually that long ago, not that much has changed since then, was 2.35 uh, athlete deaths per month. Now, just in between January 2021 and April 2022, that's what, 14, 15 months, we see that the average number of deaths was 42 per month. I mean, that is absolutely staggering. And so I think that even if someone is getting one of these shots and they are developing, even if it is only mild and transient inflammation of the muscle of the heart, if they then go on to participate in intense activity, then that is potentially the straw that breaks the camel's back and take someone from a situation of potentially being able to cover, recover from this inflammation to sudden cardiac death, which we are seeing on the rise, uh, at least we have been seeing in the past two years, um, an exponential increase in cardiac events among athletes. Now, something I would also question, again, I'm not a cardiologist and this really isn't my field of expertise, so take this with a large grain of salt. I wonder, that I know of some cardiologists at least who would say that if there is inflammation of the myocardium, if there is a mild form of myocarditis or pericarditis, that the damage caused by that is potentially going to be um, permanent in that there is very little regeneration of the cells in that area of the body. And therefore, there is no such thing as mild or transient 
uh, pericarditis or myocarditis, which is the way that many in the mainstream media and mainstream kind of conventional uh, medical establishment are having you believe. They're saying that, well, okay, these people are developing carditis, but it's only mild and it's transient and it disappears. Whereas there are this other group of doctors who are saying, actually, that's complete BS because this 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 causes permanent damage. In short, what this study has essentially shown us is that it was way more or damage to the heart is a lot more common than we were previously led to believe. Again, anyone who looks with their eyes looks at the rate of cardiac events among the athletes, among just the average population. We look at how many people are dying of sudden cardiac cardiac arrest, sudden death for no uh, identifiable reason. Um, this could very well help help to put that into context and help to give us some meaning as to why that's happening. In that, if it's only if if it's ultimately one in thirty five, as opposed to one in ten thousand, then um, then it would make a lot of sense. Now we don't know why some people are responding in this way, whereas others don't. I speculate in the article that I wrote, and I'll link it in the show notes. As I said, I speculate um, why. These events are more common among males. I think maybe it has to do with sex differences of the immune system. Uh, there are changes with the sex hormones. If someone uh, has higher levels of testosterone, then this is going to shift the way that the immune system reacts to threats. Uh, males generally tend to have stronger immunity in certain respects or certain ways, as opposed to females. The rate of autoimmunity in females is Ex exponentially higher than you would see in males. So there are very specific sex, sex specific differences, let's say. And I think that that might be one of the reasons uh, why males tend to be more affected by this. Interestingly, in the original study, it was shown that uh, women were predominantly affected and they speculate as to why that might have been as well. So I hope that you found this helpful. It was just a short one today. And if that's everything, see you next time.